Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of RevLog. Andy here. We have a little bit more information on the 2021 Subaru BRZ. Finally, we get a glimpse of the real car, uh, albeit only it's a few different angles here and there, especially the really far view panning away from the canyon road uh, even if you zoom in it's all pixelated like some japanese porn so you're really not gonna see much there we're gonna have to wait till the 18th of this month to see what the real car looks like uh, but there's some promising signs you know a lot of soft curves it looks like um, there's this uh, front view image that subaru showed uh, as well as the the side vents that was close in proximity from the video um, we've, we've already seen from the wrapped prototype that the very bottom portion of that vent is uh, blocked off um, but the rest of it seems pretty uh, like a pretty large opening and looks very functional so let's let's see it's looking pretty promising um, that side vent i don't know if it's specifically going to be for the brz uh, but you know it's actually a very clever design from toyota and subaru um, as the the side vent you can really relate it to the subaru's design dna language uh, they kind of started from the GRB hatchbacks and kind of carry that through to all of the recent WRXs and STIs. Um, and of course you can also argue that that same exact design language works on the uh, Lexus uh, F variants. And also if they wanted to carry that into the, the Gazoo Racing or the GR86 version, I think uh, that sort of same design language carries very well. So good design. Um, you know, it's not always easy to uh, make both designs happy when you're doing an OEM project, meaning you're sharing the platform. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, they've varied the um, defender vent portion before as it's just uh, one plastic trim. So maybe we end up with the same fender, but they end up doing something with the fender vents again. Um, but yeah, let's see uh, what kind of variant we get. And various uh, media outlets have photoshopped the front corner view. Uh, matching it to the more full width front view. You know, to me, it, because of the soft curves, it's actually kind of reminiscent of the Porsche Panamera in a way. Um, uh, but if I look at the spy photos or some uh, renderings uh, or photoshops of the full car, it's like inexplicably a Hyundai Tiburon in a way too. So, so we'll have to wait until we see the, the car in person to make an actual judgment of the design. Now I've made a video on some of the reasonings on why the new GR86 or the new BRZ uh, could may not be as good as the original. Um, so if you want to get a lot of in-depth information on that, uh, check out the link above. Um, it, from the video, it does sound like uh, Subaru is going to retain a four-cylinder boxer. Uh, there were some rumors suggesting that it could be a six-cylinder, but I don't think that's true, at least from the sound of the video. A lot of people are expecting that it's going to be a 2.4 liter, uh, producing around 217 horsepower, which is uh, definitely a slight increase. But again, I think the concern is we don't know exactly how much more weight it's going to add on. Uh, the overall direction seems like the car is becoming more of a GT grown-up sort of a car. Um, and you know, obviously added features is always welcome uh, to make the creature comforts better. I just don't want it to come at an expense of the, the weight because I think the driving dynamics is what makes the BRZs and 86s uh, such fun cars. You know, I'll gladly take nice features that make your daily driving a little bit better experience, but um, a lot of the 86 BRZ twin buyers are, uh, are buying these cars because it's such a lightweight, nimble platform. And going back to the, the power plant, I really don't think Toyota and Subaru are, are, are gonna raise so much horsepower, um, especially now because we have the base Supra in place. I, I just don't see it happening. I mean, if you wanted to go force induction, you, you now have an option in Supra. Um, so if, you, if you're looking for that kind of package, it's there. Obviously, it's not a two plus two like the BRZ, so it's not as um, versatile of a car, but in a way, Toyota has answered uh, your question of wanting more horsepower now you have the base supra in around the forty thousand dollar price mark um, so i i don't know if you could just go to that package i guess they haven't answered it completely though because it's uh, the toyota, the base toyota supra doesn't have a manual option so you'll have you might have to wait uh, for that 
I was actually hoping to do a live session uh, when the car launches on the 18th, but I realized it's actually 6 a.m. Pacific time. And it seems like when I added the uh, presentation into my Outlook, it's only a 15 minute presentation. So I don't know how long or how extravagant the launch will be. So I've decided against doing the live uh, session with you all, but hopefully I'll, uh, I'll get a chance to communicate with, with everyone once there's sort of a bigger event. Well, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Revlog. If you like this content, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to our channel. And I'm always listening to which car I should do a full review you on. Um, I think you guys already seen that I've, I've done a full Kia Stinger review so please check that out uh, in the link above. Can't wait till the 18th to see the full unveiling of the next gen BRZ. Until then I'll see you guys in the next episode and leave me your comments down below.